Thank you. Uh, we'll now turn to member questions. I recognize myself for five minutes. This week in a story uh, about the lingering impact COVID has had on our economy, uh, the Washington Post reported, quote, a new normal has settled into the U.S. economy, one that nobody could have predicted. The pandemic's impact on housing, quote, set off a home buying frenzy that resulted in, quote, a stunning 48% surge in home prices that lifted the average U.S. sales price to over $552,000, end quote. As these prices have gone up, wages have not kept pace, and people don't believe it's going to be transitory. Nationwide, median home prices are now nearly six times the median household income, despite historic levels of government intervention in housing markets. Dr. Louts, what do these shifts mean for the American middle class family looking to buy or sell a home? What does the data tell us about how they are reacting to this increasingly expensive new normal? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the question. So traditionally, when we look at our data dating back to 1981, the typical home buyer who's placing 20% down would be putting 20% of their household income towards housing. Unfortunately, we know that that has pushed up more than 23% in recent months, 28% even. Uh, it is coming down, and that's a good thing. And the reason it has come down slightly is because interest rates have come down by a full percentage point since October. That being said, the price of housing is due to the supply out and demand outpacing that supply. So when we look at multiple offer situations, especially as we go into the spring months, we suspect that they'll heat up again because consumers are interested in purchasing a home. The demand for housing is there. We also know that we're at a really critical time point as we have a lot of young millennials who are trying to enter into the housing market at the same time that retirees are looking for a retirement property, and that's putting a lot of demand for housing into the market. Thank you. Uh, as, as borrowers attempt to grapple with the economic realities of this uh, housing market, it seems clear that some are resorting to alternative ways to manage their higher housing costs. For some, that might mean resort to, resorting to co-buying arrangements or supplementing their incomes with um, something known as accessory dwelling units, uh, kind of multiple um, properties on one lot. Uh, for others, they might pursue other less traditional pathways to finance a mortgage beyond the government-backed channels like the GSEs or FHA. Uh, Dr. Frantitoni, um, can you speak to how we are seeing, what we're seeing in the marketplace on some of the non-traditional ways that borrowers and lenders finance homes? Yeah, I think it would be sense to first to highlight that borrowers are using the traditional uh, methods as well. So we're seeing many lenders, uh, their FHA share, their business has increased. And then within that FHA, you've seen uh, debt to income ratios increase because of the strains that you're talking about. Outside of that, I mentioned in my testimony, a, uh, some growth in the non-QM market, which do provide some additional underwriting flexibilities, but I would still characterize it as a very small portion of the market and the flexibilities as limited. I think the structure we're operating today, the entire market is much safer, certainly than we were 15 years ago as a result of the safeguards that have been put in place. And uh, I think those are holding even in this tough environment. Yeah, thank you for that. And you talk about one of the dynamics of the market years ago in the great financial crisis is structured credit and the uh, role that plays in our market. So one of the most pressing issues impacting housing affordability right now is the lack of supply in the single family market. Data from the Federal Reserve uh, of St. Louis shows that the average 30 year fixed mortgage rate has increased from 3.3% in 2020 to roughly 7% today. Uh, that's a 110% increase just in that span. As a result, something like 80% of homeowners currently have mortgage rates uh, below 5% and a huge number below 4%. So Americans uh, have difficulty deciding to sell a home that they've got a mortgage rate that's low locked into, and they're not putting it on the market. So some have said, well, what if it was transferable uh, or assumable? Somebody could assume your mortgage. Of course, the structured credit market in our country, these risks have already been uh, sold off, and so it makes it hard to price that risk. So, Dr. Fratinoni, how could a secondary market develop? How could we maybe get a way to price that risk in a secondary market? Do you have any thoughts? Yeah. So, as you know, FHA and VA mortgages are assumable, but today for a buyer to take that loan, oftentimes they'll need an additional amount to meet the purchase price given the home price gains that we've seen. 
and that would have to either come from cash or, or a second loan. Uh, if we were to move the conventional market back to where it was you know, prior to the late 1980s of having an assumable feature, again, we'd have to do that on a prospective basis. We couldn't address the loans that have 3% rates today. Thank you. My time has expired, and I now recognize the ranking member from Missouri, Mr. Cleaver, uh, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Lutz, uh, uh, thank you for being here.